Live. This is Uncle Tickles. You are watching the movie club that is like a book club, but with movies. Today, we are talking about The Graduate, May 1967, directed by Mike Nichols. And uh, to talk about that today with us, we have <clears throat> a special guest, Dancing Sean from History of Westeros and the Dancing Sean YouTube channel fame. Sean, say hello to all the, the listeners out there and watchers and introduce yourself. Hello, everybody. I'm excited <laughs> to be here. This is a, an awesome thing Tommy's got put together, and this is an awesome movie to talk about. I, this is my favorite thing in the world to do is talk <laughs> about movies and uh, television, film, media in general, I guess. Um, one of the things that was really interesting to me when uh, I started to dig into the film was learning a little bit more about the context surrounding it, and I think learning about that made me appreciate the film so much more. Um, if you want to take it away there, Sean. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, I mean, in the 60s, it, you can't really talk about the 60s, really the 70s too, but but really 67 really was, that's when the Vietnam War was really kicking in. That's when the feminist movement was just starting. It was a very tumultuous time. There's a lot of change happening in society, in American society, I guess, especially. Um, and there's always lots of change, I guess, you know what I mean? And especially nowadays, things seem to be so accelerated with the internet and, and the media that we have. But at that time, it was, things were starting to pick up. You know, TV was still relatively new. The space race was starting. One neat thing that happened that year was the Beatles, uh, the, the first worldwide satellite broadcast happened in 1967. And 400 million people at the same time which again, that number was a lot bigger in 1967, but it's still bigger than the whole United States population right now. <laughs> Listen to All You Need Is Love by the Beatles. You know, there was, there was a, a certain sort of connectivity and progress happening in the world. Thurgood Marshall was the first black man signed to the Supreme Court. Um, the, feminine, the Feminine Mystique by Betty Friedan was released. Loving versus Virginia, which was the court case that I, and just, I, I just can't believe they had to have a court case for this, but it was a different time. But that's the court case that allowed interracial marriages, you know what I mean? But at the same time, we had the Vietnam War. We had a draft. Muhammad Ali refused to serve. Tens of thousands of people were marching in the streets against the Vietnam War. And again, do you know what it takes? I can't get 10 people organized <laughs> without the internet, right? Well, How yeah. do they get 50,000 people to go to the same place at the same time for the same cause and march? I mean, so it, it's really, you know, and in, in addition to the Vietnam War, but also race riots were happening. There were hundreds and hundreds of, just in 1967, hundreds of arrests, hundreds of fires, hundreds of in, injuries. 106 people died in race riots in 1960. Like, it's it's kind of news now when, like, one person dies, you know. And, it, and you know what? And all 106 of these probably weren't even very well covered in the media, you know. Anyway, it was, it was a lot going on in society. And a lot of it, I think, was this divide in generations, which, again, is kind of a universal thing, right? It's not like only in the 60s did they have this. But I think it was a little bigger at that time. But that idea in general... Let's jump to some of your favorite moments from this movie. Um, I, I know that, you know, I had quite a bit, but um, what were yours? Well, my, if, I, if I just have to pick one, and it's hard because there were a few, and I'll end up touching on some of my other favorites when we get into... Yeah, you certainly don't have to pick show, one. But yeah, but if I have to pick one, the one that made me realize, the one that it took me two or three viewings before I was like, Oh wow! Just like a, a layer that it just, I just wasn't picking up on. Uh, similar to you, that I think that when I was younger, I, I, a I didn't fully understand everything as I saw it, and uh, b I had just kind of forgotten some of it. I remember it's been a, a while, but a, I don't know, tenish years ago, I brought it up to one of my friends. It's one of my favorite movies, and he's like, "Oh, oh yeah, I remember that part when he brings it to the strip club, you know?" <laughs> and like, I don't. I don't remember that part. What are you talking about? I, I just didn't remember that part, you know. But uh, anyway, the the I went back and rewatched it. I was like, I think this is one of my favorite movies. I don't remember part of it. And so yeah. on this viewing that I watched, again, 10 years ago, after having seen it at least a couple times already, the moment when there, it's it's part of the scene where Ben decides he wants to get to know Miss Robinson, right? Yeah. And she wisely does not want to do this. <laughs> he pushes. She's like, fine. 
And he starts off asking her, you know, what do you want to talk about? And she's trying to dismiss him. She's like, I don't know art. He's like, I don't know anything about art. What else? She's like, well, let's talk about your college. He's like, I don't want to talk about my college. <laughs> and eventually he asks her, what did you study in college? And she's, and she turns away from him. So she's now facing the camera and away from him. And her face is just saddening. It's subtle, but it's, it's coming. I don't know how to say it, but solemn. So, um, yeah. And she says, art. And he's like, Huh. He's still just kind of, oh, I guess you lost interest, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's not clicking in his mind either that she had this thing that she loved in her youth and she lost it. And it, it adds to her sort of dissatisfaction with her life and her marriage and, and why she's going after this fair, I guess, you know. Anyway, it was this, it was this very subtle, quick tender moment in the middle of a lot of other that that whole scene was very thick with happenings but uh but the that turn of the camera everything from like the how they wrote it to the editing to the acting to, it was just beautifully tough if that makes yeah. sense yeah. and i love how that scene ends with with ben saying like let's not talk let's not talk ever again you know, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. it starts with him wanting to talk and it, yeah. and it ends with that uh, um no, that's, it, I, I enjoyed that scene a lot. I, I, that's in the first half of the film. I enjoyed the first half a ton. And it's not that I, dis, I didn't enjoy the second half. It's just probably I enjoyed it for the wrong reasons. Um, I, I definitely have more for me on, on here. Um, checking into the hotel when they do the, when they have their first, um, you know, their first affair. To me, that was great because uh, it was solid comedy. You know, it's him trying to be discreet while doing all the things possibly to make, just to call attention to the situation. Hello, Benjamin. Oh, hello. May I sit down? Of course. Thank you. How are you? Very well, thank you. Drink? I'll drink, of course. He didn't see me. Waiter, I will have a martini. Yes, ma'am. You don't have to be so nervous, you know. Nervous? Well, I am a bit nervous. I mean, it's pretty hard to be so awful here. Did you get us a room? What? Have you gotten us a room yet? I haven't, no. Do you want to? Well, I don't. I mean, I could. Or we could just talk. You want me to get it? You? Oh, no, no, I'll get it. Do you want to get it now? Now? Yes. Well, I don't know. Why don't you get it? Well, I don't think of it. Well, I will then, if you'll excuse me. <laughs> please anything wrong sir what no nothing do you have any luggage mr gladstone luggage yes yes i do where is it what and where is your luggage Oh, it's in the car. It's, it's out there in the car. Very good, sir. I'll have a porter bring it in. Oh, no. I mean, I, I'd rather not go to all the trouble of bringing it all in. I just have a toothbrush. I can get it myself. That's all right. Of course. I'll have a porter show you the room. Oh, well, actually, I just as soon find it myself. I just have a toothbrush to carry up, and I, I can handle it myself. Whatever you say, sir. Thank you. Mrs. Robinson? Yes. For you. Thank you. Hello? Mrs. Robinson? Yes. It's Benjamin. 
Yes. Benjamin Bragg. Benjamin, where are you? Can you look through the glass? Can you see me now? Yes, I can. I got a single room. That's fine. But there's one thing. The desk clerk seemed to be a little bit suspicious. Now, I don't know what the policy is. Well, do you want to go up first? Yes, I think that would be good. I'll be up in five minutes. Oh, goodbye then. Benjamin. Yes. Isn't there something you want to tell me? To tell you? Yes. Well, I want you to know how much I appreciate this. Really. The number. What? The room number, Benjamin. I think you ought to tell me that. Oh, you're absolutely right. It's 568. <laughs> the room number band. had so many great comedic moments and it makes sense given the writer and the director for sure that it's hard to remember that it's i think i feel that way about groundhog day sometimes when you you know on first watch it's bill murray it's a comedy right but when you watch a couple more times like man this is kind of dark i mean sure. he's trying to kill himself here <laughs> like yeah uh, it, and, and that's one that super movie kind of like that too yeah 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 i think so where they've kind of become these deeper movies that people once appreciated for face value and now they've found these um you know these allegorical things that they've taken from them um shall we go on to the second half or are, are we ready to do this yeah some of the comments i have even on what you're talking about now I, I expect to come out through the rest of this so let's go ahead with it yeah okay cool uh so we are going to do the second half of this movie which to me again uh I, I like it, but I think it's intentional, unintentionally funny. I don't, I'm not sure that they were going for the for this humor that I, that I found. Let's just chronologically kind of hit, hit hit through how this movie, the second half of this finishes. So so Ben goes on a date with Elaine, right? He takes her to the strip club. The 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 dancer famously booby tassels the back of her head while she cries. Um, she runs out, leaves. Um, and, and this would be enough, right? This would be enough for most people to just be like, I'm going to call it a night. Uh, ben apologizes. They go out. They have a bite to eat at the drive-in. Um, and then he drives her home. They want to have another drink. So they, you know, they, they're they trying to find a late night bar. <laughs> she suggests the Taft <laughs> Hotel, which is where he goes for his liaisons with, with Mrs. Ro Mrs. Robinson. There's a hilarious scene where everyone knows him. Oh, gosh, what is his name? Mr. Goldberg or Mr. Goldstein? Uh, uh, Gladstone. 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 Mr. Gladstone. Yeah, Joey Gladstone. Um, yeah, and, and so, you know, there's this, she's trying to figure out what's going on. Every, you know, all the bellboys, the concierge, everyone, Mr. Gladstone, Mr. Gladstone, you know, <laughs> uh, oh, they must have me confused with someone else. He, he totally comes out that, you know, I, okay, well, he, she, and she asks him, like, she's smart enough to put it together. Like, are you having an affair? Um, yes. He, he comes clean, but doesn't come clean that it's her mom, that it's this older woman with a son. So, it seems like the next day, if I'm remembering, the next he's like, "Can I take you out tomorrow?" Yeah, cool. There goes to pick her up for a drive. Instead of her getting in the car, uh, Mrs. Robinson gets in. She's disheveled. Her makeup's running. It's raining out, right? And and she's, you know, I, I think that's done very well. You know, she's yeah, yeah. You know, she's disheveled. You know, she's out of. It sort. shows this sort of franticness and determination or whatever. Yeah. Yes, and it's just kind of like okay, she's losing her shit. You realize like how far she's willing to go. You know, like I'll tell, I'll, I'm willing to tell her is what she says. He decides, okay, well, <laughs> I mean, I. <laughs> This is how crazy it gets. Like he's impulsive. Okay, well you're gonna tell her. Well, I'm I'm not even gonna consider that you might be bluffing. I'm just gonna go run yeah. into the house and tell her first, right? So he runs in. You have this great scene that you're talking about with the rack focus. He's telling her, you know that woman, the older woman. Well, shifts focus to Mrs. Robinson in the back. Elaine putting it together. Refocus back to Elaine. She's destroyed clearly. Um, Mrs. Robinson's destroyed. She's hit with the reality of what she's done. You know, now, <laughs> now the stalking sets in, right? <laughs> so Ben starts stalking. He's showing up at the house. He's from a distance. He's looking. He's watching. Oh, uh, Mr. Robinson's taking Elaine back to college. I see that that's happening. So now I'm going to tell my parents that, uh, you know, I'm, we're getting married. I'm just going to, even though I know that's what my parents... I know how misleading and how dis how much this might destroy them when they find out the reality of it. Uh, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move to Berkeley on a whim, even though she doesn't. She, I know she hates me. I'm gonna stalk her. He stalks her. Shows up on a bus. Uh, you know, while she's on her way to to a date with her boyfriend. Um, 
and she's cool with it. Then she shows up back at her room, at, at his room. She's upset clearly, but she wants answers. She wants closure. That I understand. I, I don't find that problematic. What I do find problematic is we now learn that what Mrs. Robinson has told the family is that Ben raped her. Ben just has to say like, nope, nope, I, I didn't rape her. That's crazy. And maybe she knows her mom, you know, maybe like in the, that's in the my thought of, here is it in the back of her mind, she knows. Yeah. That, that either. I, I think if here are some possibilities that she made that up in her own mind that Miss Robinson didn't even tell her that, that that might be a way for her to justify it. I'm not, I'm not very confident about that theory, but uh, <laughs> another, what I think is more likely is that that's what her mom told her, but we've seen how manipulative she is. We've seen how she gaslights people. Right. Uh, Elaine, it's Elaine's mom. She's got to know. Does that make sense? So I think Elaine knows that her mom, it, you, you know what I mean? Like, it, I think Elaine knows that that's not the truth. It, 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 in the moment that she's upset and that's what, and Ben says we had an affair and if she has an argument with her mom, of course, Miss Robinson says that and Elaine accepts it. You know what I mean? But I don't think that Elaine really believes it, especially as time passes. She probably pieces it together. And I also don't think that she told Mr. Robinson either. I mean, it, it's, 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 wait, wait, you don't think she told Mrs. Robinson, Mr. Robinson what? The, about the affair. I think he's still in the dark at this point. When? When Elaine goes to college, when Ben goes after, he, Ben's there for weeks, right? Yeah, I, in Berkeley. But doesn't, I think that Mr. Robinson, as soon as he finds up, he shows up there. I don't think that he knew until that I, moment. See, I disagree. I, I, I think what happens is, Elaine explains that she's going to marry Ben. And then Mr. Robinson's like, wait, what? You're going to marry Ben, the dude that raped our mom? Mm, I nope. think that when Ben, when Elaine's going to marry Ben, that's when Mrs. Robinson tells Mr. Robinson because Mr. Robinson doesn't want it to happen. And so she's like, okay, tell him Mr. Robinson. He will not let it happen. He'll, so you he'll think pull her college funding. He'll go up there and tell Ben off. So, so she's told Elaine, but she hasn't told the husband. That's what I think. Here's... There's a number of reasons to have for thinking about it, but here's just one one thought. Like the the fact that even when Mr. Robinson does show up, he shows uh, he he what he says to Ben is, "I might be able to get the police involved. You're filth." He doesn't say, "I'm calling the police because you raped my wife," right? Well, he I, would I, definitely I, call the police if he thought that Ben raped his wife. He's wondering if he can get the police involved. Well, see, I don't know about this. I don't. I, I think this is again. We have to step back. We're thinking about this from 2021. This is 1967, where maybe victims aren't believed as uh, as much as they are now. And and I still don't even think they're really believed as much as they should be now. You know, like the. But at this time, for sure, you know, men had, I would say, more pull in the court of law. And, you know, I'm a. I disagree. I I, I think that Mrs. Robinson had this told the family, this is what happened. Um, you know, I, I was raped by Ben. He brought, he was, he, I was drunk. He, he was going to bring me home, whatever. You know, that's the story she tells Elaine. I think that's what she told Mr. Robinson. And because Mr. Robinson come, you know, when he says it, he does, you're right. He says like, I'm pretty sure I can have you convicted or I'm pretty sure I can get the police involved. But he's like, I, you know what you did? You, you, I forget how he says it, but basically like, I hope you know you caused us to get divorced. Yeah, he says, I want you to know the result of your actions. Which my which wife and I getting a divorce, yeah. your father and I are breaking up our business. Yeah. Which and which I, I guess might be able to get the police involved. Yeah. You know? Which I believe, you know, it still could be true if he if he's told like that night, right? If she comes if she comes forward that night, it can still happen. You know, I See, I, guess I think Miss Robinson this. was the one that wanted to stop this relationship from happening. For sure. And wanted yeah. to keep Mr. Robinson in the dark. Probably and, and I mean, so yeah. far, she's her plan is working out. But then all of a sudden, Elaine's going to marry Ben. Oh, well, all right. I'm going to have to tell him. I, you know. And I guess there's and that when shot. when she tells him, then he goes and et cetera. Yeah. There is that shot where, there, where Mr. Robinson's taking her to college. It does look a little bit like, I, and this is just an impression that I got, that it's, you know, he's upset. He's pissed because he's found out the, the deal. He knows, he knows what's up. And now Mrs. Robinson's like, you know, on the outside looking in, He's taking his daughter to college, and, you know, it's just kind of like this moment where we're supposed to realize, like, this family's been destroyed, and 
you know, here's Ben, <laughs> you know, watching yeah, yeah. <laughs> watching the aftermath of his destruction. Um, but anyway, so um, there's that. He, <laughs> you know, there there's the scene between Mr. Robinson and Ben. Then all of a sudden, Mr. Robinson swoops Elaine out, puts together this wedding, you know, just overnight, basically. Yeah, it, that was the thing that was hard for me to swallow. I'd never thought about it until just now watching it after having gotten married. And knowing what a hassle, every little thing you have to do. Yeah. All the pieces, all the time, the coordination, Venues, spinning, gas, communicating. Table and again, they don't have internet. They don't they can't like go online and order, you know, a photographer or search out send messages out on Facebook or whatever. Yeah. I don't know how they could have gotten it. Yeah, one by the, the way, one way they might have gotten it is if uh is if Miss Robinson was was already ready to go. She was right. already had it in the works. While Mr. Robinson is running out there to scold Ben, she's sending out invitations yeah. and calling people. They're wealthy; they can afford yeah. to just like buy plane tickets or whatever, you know. Totally. Um, yeah, and then there's you know, and then without any internet, Ben just finds through you know through the powers of deduction, <laughs> finds the church, shows up there. He's late. He's banging on the door. A fight ensues with the dad. Uh, they're, they're scuffling, happening every which way. He uses a crucifix to lock the guest <laughs> into the church. Um, there's all sorts of le legal ramifications and aftermath that I don't even know. Like you, we should have a lawyer on to talk about. Like she's, I think, technically married. I don't know. I guess they, I don't know if they've signed the the marriage certificate at that point. Um, but yeah, it's just it's crazy. Um, you, you know, just all this shit that happens in the second half of the film. Uh, Sean, I appreciate you coming on and then and doing this with us today um anything you want to plug before we go oh i always want to plug history westeros i haven't been as active with it since the show ended but uh but it's where i got my start in this sort of broadcasting thing i'm doing here and i've started doing my own thing on youtube and um uh Still kind of getting it together, but I but YouTube is promoting one minute like shorts to come. I'm sure trying to get in on the, the TikTok market. So I try to make some one minute previews of movies. I did them for the ones that we did already. I'm gonna try to do more and more movies, just like spoiler free, quick previews of movies so you can get an idea of what it's like, what, what kind of movie you're getting into if you're in the mood for the whether it's an action or whether it's dark or whether it's silly or whatever. Um, and I'm gonna try to do that. I think my, my next project is gonna be to do all the movies nominated for best picture this year i've seen almost all of them i'm going to try to watch i think it's this weekend coming up i'm going to try to watch the last one and then make little minute long reviews for all of those yeah, by the I, way my pick right now is sound of metal that movie is really good oh dancing sean youtube channel oh yeah sure, dancing yeah. sean <laughs> yeah make sure you uh you, you subscribe and and like those videos at the dance follow me sean on twitter YouTube. too oh and at dancing sean yeah. no space he is a a, a tremendous follow uh, I can attest for that. Uh, Pop Moms Podcast, check them out. Concerts That Made Us, they just released a new episode. Um, and also, I'm wearing the shirt for the Ice and Fire Con Virtual 2021 conference. That's happening this weekend. Um, also, check out the TKOK Podcast Facebook group. That's on Facebook, obviously. Uh, Instagram, uh, we have pages for all of our different podcasts, Pop Moms Podcast, the TMC Podcast, uh, TK, okay, new dad. Make sure you are following us there, and uh, and don't forget, eat God see acid coming real soon with our first episode. Uh, I will let you guys know when that's coming. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, Sean, again, thank you for being a guest on this amazing episode. Love you guys. Take care. <laughs>